welcome everyone to another episode of Sleep Science Academy interviewing the experts. Super excited to have my friend Hannah Levin, who is an Ayurvedic health counselor, yoga teacher, and yoga health coach, and also the founder of the Vitality Circle, which is a year long program to help women who are ready to thrive, on today's session. So, Hannah, welcome to Sleep Science Academy interviewing the experts. Thank you. I'm really delighted to be here. Thanks for having me as a guest. And yeah, I'm. So oh, we, go ahead. <laughs> we, we met uh, in Miami. Uh, let's see, was it last year? It was last workshop? November. Mm -hmm. Last November. Yeah. And we connected, I think, on a break. And you were sharing a little bit about what, what it is that you do with Ayurveda. And I was sharing a little bit about what I do with sleep and with helping insomniacs. And we kind of got to talking. We thought it'd be beneficial to share how what you do with Ayurveda and how the, the cycles and the rhythms of, of nature, how that can help people improve their sleep and, and really thrive in life. Because obviously right now especially we're totally disconnected from nature. We're totally disconnected from you know our natural body rhythms. And yeah. we could definitely use some insight and some help uh, for, from you with how can we start to, through using Ayurveda, this ancient wisdom from India, how can, how can we start to use this to really help us kind of reconnect to, you know, these natural rhythms to help us sleep and manage stress and thrive? Yeah, such great topics to cover. Yes. <laughs> well, first of all, I just want to thank you for having me on here and also for the work that you're doing in the world. Because when we originally connected, I was like, oh, this is so cool because he's doing work that aligns with what I do as well, but from the scientific modern standpoint, right? Mm -hmm. So I was fascinated to learn about the work that you're doing supporting sleep, sleep. people in their ability and knowledge about sleep because it is it's so important it's if you don't have good sleep you're not going to have a good life <laughs> like plain and simple and yeah. um and so with ayurveda it's it's really amazing it is connected to nature and like you said ayurveda originated from india it's over 5000 years old it's the sister science to yoga so yoga is really the spiritual path and ayurveda is that sister science of like what you do the rest of the time diet lifestyle and herbal medicine and the word ayurveda actually gives us a lot of information about what it is so in sanskrit are you means life and Veda means knowledge or science. Wow. So, so that's it. No, so, so put that together. So it's, yeah, so it's the knowledge or science of life, which I Amazing. like to translate as the owner's manual that none of us ever got. Basically <laughs> it's like, how do like we that. understand the individual bodies and minds that we've been gifted for this lifetime? So Ayurveda is set up on a five element system. So it's based in the five elements of space, air, fire, water, and earth. And everything comes back to those five elements, whether it's um, a body constitution, like the build of a body, whether it's food, whether it's the weather, whether it's a emotion, all of those things come back to elemental natures. And so the way that Ayurveda is set up is on an individualized um, trajectory where we look at each person has a different amount of each of the elements in their constitutions. And we call that dosha or energies so there's three doshas in ayurveda that are each made up of the elements so i'll just briefly share what those are vada is made up of air and ether so that's more of like a thin thin build lighter um constitution tendency towards anxiety we see this vada imbalance coming in for a lot of people right now pitta is made up of fire and water a more medium build and um more focused 
competitive, linear thinking, logical, organized. Um, but that fire can sometimes get out of control. We're seeing that a lot now too. Mm -hmm. And then kapha is made up of fire and water, or sorry, earth and water. And so kapha is more heavy. The, the build physically is a thicker build. It doesn't mean necessarily overweight, but like a thicker body type. But then also kapha is the more dense um, feelings too, like more grounded. It's what allows us to sleep well, but it can also be lethargy or feeling unmotivated or brain fog, things like that. So each of the doshas can show up in different ways, but each of us is made up of all three, but in different amounts. So for instance, I'm vada predominant with a high secondary pitta and hardly any kapha in my constitution. And the point is never to balance all three. It's simply to get to know the constitution that we have and be able to work with it skillfully for all optimal health and well-being. So wow. that's a little introduction. Okay, so that's a lot. So I'm gonna try to break that. No, it's awesome, yeah. it's amazing. So, so we have these five elements, and then we have these three doshas, which are like body types or um, constitutions, I think you, you said, right? Yeah, we can and, think of them as constitutions. Okay, constitu and can you, can you share, what, what, how, how would you explain a constitution? It's like, that's like your makeup, or how would you, how would you define, like, how, how would I know what, I'm, what constitution I am? Yeah. So to really get to know it, I recommend working with a practitioner of Ayurveda so that you really get to have that deeper exploration. There's lots of dosha quizzes online that you can take. Um, and maybe we can link some to this, uh, to this conversation. Um, but really it's an exploration, like how you experience life. Like there's some things like for your body, like, do you tend to be thin? Do you have trouble gaining weight? Do you have trouble losing weight? right and then there's kind of mental tendencies as well like do you tend towards anxiety or tend towards anger or tend towards um lethargy do you tend towards um having a ravenous appetite or forgetting to eat meals or right there's okay. all these pieces that come together that um so a dosha quiz can can help guide you into that but one distinction i want to make is that there's there's two terms that are helpful here one is called prakriti and the other is vikriti so prakriti is your base nature constitution so it is established when you're conceived so it has a lot to do with the state of your parents when they made you and that your prakriti is where it's like the recipe of vada pitta and kapha that makes you uniquely you and where you are the happiest and the healthiest vikriti is imbalance in dosha and that comes in as we live our lives and so we'll see imbalance come in in where we get out of the path of ease basically where we experience dis ease now that could come in as you know stomach issues or headaches or um anxiety or depression or it can be anything that's like or sleep issues right like yeah, having yeah. sleeping that would be a vikruti, not your prakriti but some prakritis have more of a tendency towards certain vikritis if that makes sense like okay, you're so, set up by your original constitution to have more issues um later later in life so we all have vikriti that we're dealing with and that's really where this practice of ayurveda comes in is it can help you just simply live a good life knowing your constitution and be healthy and happy but it can also help reverse disease to get you back on the path of ease from getting out of balance. Got it. So that's that's also so we're we're adding in another layer here. So yes. are you born with your constitution? Is that something yes. that you're born with? Okay. And then what yes. you're saying is certain constitutions have certain tendencies to have imbalances, which you call vikrutis. Is that vikruti? So everybody has vikruti throughout their lives. Um, but depending on your constitution, your original constitution of prakriti, you're going to have more tendencies towards certain vikrutis. Shall I give an example? Yeah. Well, how about, I'm really curious. I mean, is with people with sleep challenges, yeah. can you, is there like, 
this like people that have insomnia and sleep challenges where they tend to have me you know go, go take it that way for yeah, yeah yeah let's <laughs> let's talk about that cool. yeah so um generally sleep challenges show up in either vada or pitta imbalances so imbalances are vikriti so with vada imbalances that would show up for sleep as a few different things. It could show up as um, trouble falling asleep, but most often it will show up as trouble staying asleep. That the light qualities of vada, of air and space, don't uh, allow that person to sink down into the depth of sleep. So, and there's also a doshic clock. <laughs> which um, different energies from these constitutions govern different times of the day. And so between 2 and 6 a.m. is governed by Vada. So this is a time when a lot of people wake up. When people, when I work with clients and they say, I often wake up in the middle of the night and I'll say, is it between 2 and 6 a.m.? And they say, yes. I would say like, 98% of the people I yeah. talk to, and maybe you see this too, yeah. is if they're waking up, it's between 2 and 6 a.m. And that is the Vada time of that early morning time when the energy is really light. Vada also governs movement. So it might be the time when you need to get up and pee, right? And then your mind starts getting active and you don't feel grounded enough to get back to sleep. You're wound up and the anxiety starts or the to-do lists or the just all the what ifs and then maybe you get up later in the morning or you go back to sleep and you wake up and you're like why was i so worried like that seemed so hard really early in the morning and now it's not such a big deal it doesn't feel as out of control so that vada energy is is something to be reckoned with um I'll talk about remedying those things in a moment from an Ayurvedic perspective. We can see Pitta show up in, so that's the fire energy with um, going to sleep in that uh, people have trouble like winding down. Mm. This can be okay. Vada and Pitta, but they'll get in bed, but they're just like overstimulated right? And the, the, their body can't actually relax enough or tune out enough to sink into sleep. And so there's, there's pieces of timing that are helpful for that. And also um, sleep hygiene, right? Mm -hmm. that, that you teach as well, that, that are really key pieces to, to supporting sleep in that way. Kapha generally doesn't have trouble with sleep except the issue of staying asleep too long or sleeping too late into the morning. Yeah. And, um, and so, yeah, you might see that as well in your work. Yeah, that's interesting. So, so there's, a, there's actually a, a sleep doctor. His name is Dr. Michael Bruce. Are you familiar with him at all? No. So he, he has this thing. It's very cool. Um, it's, you know, you're, you're we're talking a little bit like chrono, we, in modern science, or whatever, yeah. we call it chronobiology, right? So, and he came up with these different types of, um, similar to the, the doshas, and, and there's different types, and he, he, he calls them different animals, right? And depending if you're, if, like, so for instance, sharing a little bit about the, the kapha type would be like a bear. And a mm -hmm. bear is like a good sleeper and like, you know, can sleep and kind of like heavier or bigger. And then he has like the dolphin, which is most cases insomniacs, which sounds maybe like a pitta or what was the first one you, you, you shared about? Vada. The, the vada. So, so like a dolphin would be like a vada. So he kind of took the ancient wisdom of uh, Ayurveda, it sounds like, and he kind of mm -hmm. brought it to, to modern science. And, and you know, he, there's a whole book on it called Power of When. But it sounds like, so it's, it's, it's very interesting. So it sounds like there's these, these common threads based off of your constitution. And depending on what your constitution is, then there's, as far as sleep goes, there's these potential issues of either getting to sleep, staying asleep, or being an awesome sleeper, right? Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah, or, or sleeping too much. That's often okay. the kapha issue, um, which, which can also be detrimental um, of, of staying asleep too much. I know that's not probably your clientele. No, it's no, no, it's not. No, they're, 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 they're wishing that they were right. kaphas. Um, yes, yeah. So we can cultivate that kapha energy so that 
the general overarching wisdom from Ayurveda is to balance with the wisdom of opposites. Okay. So this is where this elemental nature comes in. So if there's too much air that's like lifting you up and you're like spinning around in the sky, that you can bring in earth to help ground down. So this is where timing comes in and also sleep hygiene. So for those people that feel too wound up or go to sleep and then wake up wound up, there's some simple little tips like rubbing the soles of your feet with sesame oil before you go to sleep that helps ground your energy and sesame oil is very warming and nourishing oil in general is a great balance to the dry light qualities of air so that's a really simple thing you can do you might want to wear a pair of light socks so you don't get your sheets all oily but it's really nourishing to the whole body and the whole nervous system other things that can be really helpful are staying away from stimulation for one to two hours before you go to sleep. I know these are some things that you, you teach about too, like staying away from blue light, staying mm -hmm. away from um, heated conversation <laughs> or yeah. listening to the news or, you know, really protecting that time, that sleep bubble before you go to sleep. And when we look at the dosha clock that I was referring to earlier, that time before bed between 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. is kapha time. Kapha time. So kapha energy is predominant during that time. And I really ask all of my clients to notice when they start yawning in the evening. Because a lot of us do maybe around 8, 8.30. And we don't take note of it. We're just like, oh, that's just normal. But when we notice that, we're like, there's that kapha energy that's like, ah, right? Or even taking ah breaths. That's something I teach too, where you go, ah. Kind of let, letting it all go, letting the day letting go. Letting it go. Relax. And guys, she, she did not say coffee. She didn't say coffee time. She said kapha time. <laughs> Let's coffee just be clear, <laughs> not coffee time, no okay? No coffee time. Coffee time. So, so taking a deep inhale and exhale, you know, is letting the day kind of settle, that would be more kapha sort of yeah. Yeah. rituals or... Yeah, so doing that, you know, I also teach yoga, so doing some really gentle yoga, forward folds, laying on the floor with your legs up the wall, inversions are really relaxing to the nervous system. Those pieces are really helpful. And then also when we look at the doshic clock, that 10 o'clock time is a cutoff where the doshic clock switches from kapha time into pitta time. So that fire lights up. And we know from chronobiology, from understanding our body functions, that that's a time when our inner fire lights up again. During the day, the middle of the day, 10 to 2 a.m. to p.m., our bile production is at its strongest. In the eve at night, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., is when our cellular intelligence lights up to take out the trash. So if we're not asleep during that time, our body lights back up. We get a second wind. We want to mm. do projects. We might get hungry again, which is very detrimental. Yeah. To eat and yeah. then we get all off of schedule, right? This is probably mm. very similar to all, all that you teach. But knowing that energetic time of the doshas is really helpful. So utilizing kapha time, like the witching hour is 10 p.m., maybe 1030 this time of year because it's staying light so late, but that we have this little window of like, if we can sink into sleep, we have the support of earth element helping us ground down, be at peace, be held. If you think about being nurtured and held by mother earth, that's what we can take advantage of before 10 PM. After that, all bets are you, you, You're missing, you're missing what I call the sleep train. Yeah. It's coming around yeah. and it, you want to get on it. Right. <laughs> so, so, okay. So yeah. And so, so it sounds like, you know, it, what's really interesting about this is it really sounds like the whole science of chronobiology has come literally from this yeah. ancient 5,000 year old wisdom that these yogis knew 5,000 years ago about, yeah. you know, the, the body clocks. And, and, and so it's really, this is really interesting. Um, kind of diving yeah, into this. And and I think it's really cool, like having studied 
Ayurveda and yoga to see all of this now being proven by modern science. Yes. It's so cool. It's so cool, you know? It is cool. It's kind of like, well, now it's not, guys, it's definitely not woo-woo, right? Because, right. And, but it's, it's, it's crazy. It's, it, it's amazing, actually. Like, I don't, if something works, it works. Like, I don't, I, it's great to have scientific evidence and double placebo studies on things. And that's all great. But if something works, it works. So, yeah. you know, this is obviously, it's been a system for 5,000 years. There's a reason why, right? Yeah. So, I like to tell people things that don't work, don't stick around. So if this has been okay. around for over 5,000 years, there's got to be something to it. And that it's still applicable to our lives. You know, mm -hmm. human life looked very different 5,000 years ago, but that these basic principles can still hold true and can still help guide us to optimal health and wellness is incredible to me. So let me ask you something, Hannah. Yeah. So this time period, you know, if you took like a 30,000 foot view of like what we're experiencing now in this like 21st century craziness, could you like say, okay, this is overarching. This is more like Pitta energy. Like we're, we're in this like Pitta energy state over the last 10 years. That's the dog barking. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> My dog snoring in here. I don't know if he can hear might no, I can't. That. I can't. <laughs> so what would you, what would you say that, that like this? That's a great, great question. So I would say in general that we live in a very Vada elevated time. Okay. And this was true before COVID. This was true before, you know, race issues surfaced that we live in a Vada elevated time because we're multitasking, overstimulated, and undernourished. Mm. Okay. okay. We we're overfed, but we're undernourished. Yeah. And in terms of having our senses, our nervous systems have time to reset, we're living in high stress, constant high stress, and not having, I mean, no wonder people can't sleep. Mm. We don't know how anymore. We have texts and emails and people talking to us and you know even in social isolation right there's there's a lot that's coming at us bombarding us so vada has been elevated for a long time how that shows up is as overwhelm and anxiety sleep issues um indecision and worry fear so we were already there <laughs> and now bring in what's happening with COVID-19 with what's happening with black lives matter, race issues, right? Yeah. That we're all being called to the table to this larger conversation of like, how are we evolving right now? And I see more Pitta showing up, more anger, yeah. more frustration, more desire for logic, for structure, as things are crumbling, right? That we're, we're experiencing a lot of frustration. What are the rules for life right now? Who, who can help us determine what's the right way to function right now? So that Pitta energy is rising. In some ways it's helpful because that's bringing some sort of structure or systems to the chaos. At the same time, it can be detrimental because it's that fiery energy, right? We're seeing fire erupting <laughs> in our cities. We're seeing Literally. fiery language, fiery action come out. In general, that is a time of, fire is the element of transformation, right? So if we look at it from that elemental perspective, it's like, good, we're in the fire of transformation. And yet we want the fire of transformation to be guided in a way that's not entirely destructive, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So the, Makes sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It makes a lot of so, sense. Um, but then we also see people um, diving into more kapha behaviors, which is just like checking out right? Or, um, or numbing with alcohol or substance, other yeah. substances, or, you know, binge watching Netflix or whatever it is. It's just like, I can't deal with reality. So like, 
pull the covers over the head. What I want to say, though, is that all of the doshas have something to bring to the table. I've kind of spoken to the negative aspects of them, but Vada in its healthy and um, more abundant form is sattvic, which is the, the energy of balance, of clarity. You think of clear air that you can see clearly and that there's creativity. Vada brings a lot of creativity, spontaneity, and um, ability to think outside the box. So that energy is very welcome right now, right? Pitta, as I mentioned, brings the energy of structure, of, um, of being able to problem solve, of leadership and transformation. So those are positive. And Kapha brings the energy of groundedness, of recognizing connection to the whole, of being compassionate and loving and caring about what's beyond our immediate focus right now. So each dosha has its own ability to bring amazing assets to the table right now. Wow. And I, in my practices, it's really about focusing on, on those parts versus the like, whoa, everything's spinning off into chaos and <laughs> it's hopeless and challenging and, um, and destructive. And it's a both and. We can't just deny what's happening. But I believe if we focus on cultivating the positive aspects of the energies in play, that's what, right, where attention goes, energy flows. Right? Sure. We know this yeah. from trying to fall asleep, right? If you're laying there being like all the worries, all the worries, all the worries. Yeah. But if you think about like, oh, a peaceful sunset or being at the ocean, right? That that energy is what is cultivated in the body by the attention. So our attention is powerful. It is. Uh, so so thank you for sharing all that. We, yeah. uh, it's It's really, it makes a lot of sense. And hopefully people are starting to get a sense of how this system, this life manual, you know, can can be very apl applicable to to them to where they are, what they're dealing with, and what they're struggling with. So, in your in your practice and working with people, I guess the first step for somebody is really understanding well, what dosha am I, right? I, and then from there, I guess it's really then understanding okay, well, where is this dosha? How am I using this dosha to to fuel positive? growth and expansion in my life and then what are some of the I forget what you called it but what are some of the things that are keeping me from you know or vikriti vikriti there you go the vikriti um, is that sanskrit by the way yes sanskrit Got it. Mm -hmm. okay so and then and then kind of so fueling the expansion and, and the aspects of of this this dosha and then like balancing out the vikritis of, is that yeah. pretty much how, like a 30,000 foot view of what it is that you do when you work with a client? Is that how it looks? Yeah, there are some things that can just be generally helpful, regardless of your constitution. Like we were saying before, just like recognizing that we're, we live in alignment with nature, with the natural mm -hmm. rhythms. And that affects everybody, regardless of your constitution, but in kind of different ways and to different degrees. But in general, yes, what you said is, is absolutely correct. If people are wanting to dive deeper into exploring Ayurveda, it's very helpful to know your constitution and to learn about living in rhythm with nature. So um, I'm just going to put a little plug in here, too, that I teach yoga daily on Facebook, on a Facebook Live. And within that group, that's totally free for people to join, open to anybody, I do these um, Ayurveda super habit challenges once a season. So I'm about to launch into my summer one, July 13th. It's July 13th through the 21st. And this is a chance for you to explore a little bit about Ayurveda. You'll get a dosha quiz. You'll get to learn, it's just a half an hour each day that I teach. And we're focused on one habit of Ayurveda that that just starts shifting your your understanding and how you feel starts moving out the vikriti and welcoming in more balance with the prakriti in general though I would say there's three things that really differentiate Ayurveda and those are timing personal um, personalized health and then listening to the body 
Mm. And so we talked about timing a little bit already in terms of like when you do what matters. Um, and, and same, you know, we, we talked about it in terms of sleep, but same with like eating, you know, eating in general is a helpful thing, right? It fuels our, <laughs> fuels our lives. But when we do it at certain times of the day, it may be more or less beneficial. Um, so understanding timing is really important within this, this whole paradigm, the whole trajectory of living an Ayurvedic life. Personalized health is what we were talking about before too, about understanding individual constitution. So we might have more of a tendency towards certain imbalances. Um, and, and like I said, Western medicine or modern science is beginning to really understand that one size doesn't fit all. We can't just say, oh, you are having trouble sleeping, just take Ambien, see you later, right? That that's not really helping the bigger picture. No, it's and not. So, <laughs> right? so what you do and what I do is really about getting at the root cause, right? Like, yes. why is this happening? So whether it's sleep or a digestive issue or weight gain or you know, depression, whatever it is, it's looking at like, what are the things, the steps that have been taken that have gotten you to the place that you're in? And how do you, I, I think about it, like there's a path of ease. And at some point we take detours off that path. Mm. And, it, and when we can recognize like, oh, I've taken a detour. And the same path that I took to get here to this place that I don't want to be in anymore, I can turn around and come back to the path of ease is my choice and it's really empowering ultimately right your clients are totally empowered by being like oh wow i'm not stuck like this right like right. they can be like i i have made choices that i didn't realize were detrimental i can make new choices that i realize are helpful so that personalized health piece is really, really important. And Ayurveda has known this for thousands of years, and it's great to see it gaining momentum in the United States now. And then the last one is listening to the body. So again, it might be that people say like, oh, you know, I do really well when I you know, go for a walk before bedtime, but then you try that and it's like, it winds you up too much or whatever, like mm -hmm. that, that we are individual or we eat certain things and we're like, but somebody told me, like my example with food is that before I learned Ayurveda, I was like, I'm going to be really healthy. And so I ate salad all the time. And because, right, like if you want to be yeah. healthy, salad. Of course. Health <laughs> equals salad, right? <laughs> But what happened uh, for me, because I'm a pit, I'm Vata predominant, which means my body has a tendency towards cold, rough, dry qualities. Anyway, I was putting too much of those qualities in my body that actually needed more warmth and moisture. And I basically created chronic constipation for myself, which led wow. to other health issues down the road. And so Ooh. Ayurveda helps you see that like everybody's not the same. If you want to be healthy, it looks different for each person. Like vegetables, yes, vegetables are helpful. How they're eaten is, is different, right? So listening to your body instead of taking those cues from outside and being like, I have to do these things because that's mm -hmm. what I'm supposed to do, whether it's what your parents told you or the doctor or whatever, but to like turn that inward focus and listen with the ear of your heart and really say, what is it that feels really good to me? Or what do I inherently know? I talk to clients all the time that say, like when I'm like, oh, you need to do this. And they're like, you know, I've always thought that felt really good to me, but I didn't know why. And other people don't do it. So I just was like, I, that's not what I'm supposed to do. So really listening to yeah. the inner wisdom of your body, because our bodies are talking to us all the time and they're just trying to be heard. And if we don't listen, then we progress off that path of ease way quicker. Uh, I couldn't so agree with you more. Things. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's so true. I think that self-awareness, that, that understanding, listening, connecting to your inner intuition yeah. is so powerful and important. And it's, it's like, People are so disconnected right now from that because of the bombardment of technology and, you know, just this whole system is built to drive more consumerism, you know, yeah. always thinking that we need something outside of ourselves to make us happy. I mean, it's really crazy when you kind of take a step back and you really look at it. Um, and what I hear you saying so, so, so clearly is that 
you know, Ayurveda is, this is a system that can help you really understand yourself and yeah. how you can, how you can live in alignment with what's going to help you live the best life as far as from a mental standpoint, a spiritual standpoint, a health standpoint, and, and really enjoy the experience of being alive uh, in, in your life. And it's, that's what I hear. It's, you know, it's, it, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Just, there's a lot to this, obviously. And we, we have a short amount of time and you've covered a lot. I mean, we know about that there's, there's doshas, we have Victor teas and Prakriti. Prakriti. We have, you know, we have different elements. So there is a lot to the system. And obviously over 5,000 years, this thing has been developed and, and, and I'm sure refined and it's a proven tested system. Um, so how do, how do people that are interested in getting some support from you or learning more about their dosha or maybe how this can improve their, their life, where, what would be the starting point? You mentioned you have a Facebook group there. You teach yoga every day for free, which is amazing. Like what a gift. Yeah. Um, yeah. What are some other, where can people find you to get some more information to dive into the elements and the doshas and the vicar teas and, and the, yeah. All that. yeah, all of it. Yeah, thanks. Um, well, my website is heartfeltwellbeing.com. Okay. So my business is called Heartfelt Wellbeing. And um, so from my website, you can find everything else. There's the Facebook group where I teach yoga every day. You can just go on Facebook. It's called Yoga and More Day by Day with Hannah Levin. And um, that group is um is very active so i teach yoga in there every day you don't have to do yoga with me every day but all the yoga classes are um kept in units so there's now 85 yoga classes there i started this when covid hit in march um and so i've just been teaching yoga every day on there lots of different kinds of yoga practices you can tune in and see what what feels good to you if yoga is not your jam you still might want to show up to that group for these ayurveda workshops that i offer um these super habit challenges that are really fun. And you can learn a lot for free in this group um, going through these challenges. So as I mentioned, you can find a link to that in my website, but you can also go to the Facebook group Yoga and More and register there. There's links throughout the page there for the next challenge is June, sorry, July 13th through the 21st. Um, so you can mark that on your calendar. The classes are taught 4 to 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time each day. If you can't make them, they're in Facebook Live, so you can just watch them at your convenience. Um, and there's prizes and fun, and we share, and all sorts of things. Um, and this is the summer edition of this challenge. And then if folks are interested in just being in touch with me, you can just message me through Facebook or through my website and happy to, to give you more resources and, um, and see if it would be a good fit. I do lead this online year long program for women that are interested in really diving into living in alignment with Ayurveda, with the season. So it's a year long so that we journey through each season. And it's all about what we call Dinacharya, which is the daily practices of Ayurveda, which just get us in alignment with living our best lives. And it's amazing. I see people, you know, just transforming in there from losing weight to getting off of meds to um, being able to see um, huge, like sleep, being able to sleep, having more energy, um, just drastic changes that happen over time, right? It's not like a 30 day challenge or whatever that you're like, boom, done. It's really about that identity evolution that comes with little by little making changes and learning to live in deeper alignment with yourself and with the season. So Vitality Circle Info is also on my website heartfeltwellbeing.com. Well guys, that, that's, that's a lot right there. So I'll, I'll definitely put a link. I'll put a link below in this description for you to, to get access and, and check out everything that Hannah's up to. If this resonated with you and you want to learn more about yoga or Ayurveda or how you can use it to not only just improve your sleep, but improve your life because we can't connect, we can't disconnect life and sleep, right? Really we sleep so that we can live so that we can have yeah. the energy to be vibrant, to be present, to accomplish things, to feel good in our bodies and obviously Hannah has a lot to share. And it also sounds like this is, you know, a lot of information too. There's a lot of intricacies here. So you want to work with an expert 
that knows, you know, how to speak the language and kind of guide you through the process. Um, and so Hannah, I want to thank you for being on the show today. I hope that the people that are watching this, uh, take action and explore what Ayurveda and yoga have to offer. I'm a big believer in both systems. Um, I know for me, yoga definitely has been life, life changing. And, mm -hmm. um, so it's, um, you know, so guys check, check out Hannah's Facebook group, check her out uh, online, take advantage of the, of the offerings that she has. And Hannah, is there any last, um, little sleep tips that you think, uh, would be valuable? I, I mean, I, obviously it depends on what dosha you are and there's a lot of these, you know, but is there anything else that you want to just, I, one thing actually the dry brushing, brushing, right? Yeah. That's a, dry I started brushing. doing that. And um, yeah. I don't know, it feels good, you know? So there, there's definitely some, some definitely, there's a lot of information there uh, and strategies and tools, but go ahead. Is there anything that you want to share with us before we hop off here and end, end the podcast? Well, I think overall, I just want to say, don't give up. <laughs> that I think a lot of people tend to be like, I'm stuck. Or if they try one thing and it doesn't work for right away, then they're like, oh, I'm just stuck this way. And yeah. I think in the work that both of us do, it, it can be slow medicine. You know, it's like if you've been living with an imbalance or an issue for a really long time. It can take a while to reverse it or to, to shift it. Um, and, and sleep is, is just crucial. And I just want to want to reiterate that I know that's what you teach all the time it's really like it is the foundation of everything else working well in terms of digestion in terms of mental acuity in terms of our life energy and so um, it's not something to skimp on um, I would say this the tip that I gave earlier about the oiling the feet is something that I've seen help so many people across the board. Just wow, okay. if you're having trouble sleeping, sesame oil, don't use toasted sesame oil unless you want to smell like a stir fry. But <laughs> sesame oil on your feet and giving yourself a nice little foot massage before you go to sleep. And, and taking time away from screens. Those are the things yeah. that I've seen really benefit people right now. And our anxiety levels are high, our nervous systems are on overdrive. And I think the more we can really be compassionate to ourselves and just kind of like welcome ourselves into the safety of a sleep space and let everything else drift away for a time, that's that's what we really need. Yoga is helpful for that. Yoga Nidra, listening to Yoga Nidras are really helpful too. Yoga, it's yogic sleep. Um, Let's talk you can about find that next recordings time. on YouTube. <laughs> What's that? The yoga Nidras. We'll have, to, we'll have to chat about that next time. Okay. Next time. Yeah. And so, I'm going to have you in my group too. So we'll, we'll chat looking, there. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Thank so, you so much, Devin. Yeah, this was Hannah. really yeah, awesome. fun. And I hope your folks learned a lot and happy to just connect with you and share the good work in the Likewise. world. Likewise, guys, so get on Amazon Prime today, order some of this sesame oil and, and, and try it out and then let us know in the comments, you know, what happens. I know I'm gonna be trying it. So, and I appreciate yeah. you and uh, look forward to connecting with you soon. Great, thanks so much. You're Bye. welcome.